I was not good at computer science in high school. You can literally do anything you want to. I really want to get into cyber. Where should I start? Hello everybody, welcome and or welcome back to my channel. So not too long ago, I asked on Instagram if you guys had any questions about cybersecurity and the first one I did got so many questions. I actually answered most of those on Instagram. All those questions are still on my Instagram. So if you do wanna check those out, they're called Cyber Q&A. It's still there. I believe it's the first one there right now. For the second one, I decided to move it over to YouTube just so I could explain questions more completely and just kind of elaborate more on the things that I wanted to say. I feel like Instagram is a little bit limiting because there's only so much you can type out and some things just need to be explained. Cool. So without further ado, I have all the questions right here on my phone. Let's get started. So the first question I'm going to dive into is actually the question that I think I get the most. All of the questions that I get on Instagram pretty much follow the same topic or theme. So the three questions that I grouped together for this are any advice for someone in high school who wants to pursue cyber? Someone said, I really want to get into cyber. Where should I start? And then the third one was, how should I go about cybersecurity? So all three of those, pretty much the same thing. The biggest thing that I wish that I did before I got into cyber was have more experience playing around in like command line interfaces. Of course, there's so many other things that also go into cybersecurity, but as far as being comfortable in that environment and being able to work quickly and effectively, that would have helped me a ton. One thing you can do if you do have access to a computer at home is download VirtualBox. Yes, VirtualBox or VMware. VMware is not free. It definitely does cost money. So VirtualBox is the free alternative. I'm not gonna lie, VMware is so much better and I finally switched over. But if you're just getting started and you just need to learn some things, definitely just get VirtualBox. It's free and it works great. I'd honestly just download tons of virtual machines and play around, get comfortable, use some different tools. There's so many free tutorials on YouTube. I feel like I don't even have to give you one specific source. Like literally just Google some fun stuff, just play around. Don't do anything illegal, but just explore. <laughs> Someone asked, have you ever hacked anything out of boredom? And no, I haven't because I'm scared of jail. But when I was first getting into IT and just cybersecurity in general, I'm pretty sure this was when I was a freshman in college. I used to go, this is so bad. I used to go around and just like use Wireshark and just like look at the network traffic. I didn't know this was illegal, okay? So don't do that. I finally took a like cyber law class and I was just like, Okay, my bad, never doing that again. I believe it's protected in our Fourth Amendment. So there is something called the Electronic Communications Privacy Act, which we also kind of refer to as the wiretap statute. There's a no good faith exemption. So if you were just like, oh, like I didn't know, I didn't mean to do that, you would still get in trouble even if you didn't know because you should know. <laughs> That act kind of refers to our digital networks and our at-home environments and all of our data as our digital homes. So it's basically like breaking into somebody's home and like looking through their stuff. It's just not allowed. So make sure to also like research just a tiny bit like, hey, like if I do this in public, will I go to jail? You know, just something casual like that. And I know it sounds weird, but sniffing somebody's network is considered a form of wiretap. So it is a pretty serious thing be careful or at least just do it on your at-home network where nobody really cares all right the next question is have you learned about any terrorist groups and that's pretty intense but yes we have <laughs> cyber terror is a very 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 real thing so it's definitely something that we discuss in a lot of our classes even more so kind of like continuing in that path we talk about apts or advanced persistent threats which are normally some type of like state-sponsored cyber organization that has advanced persistent attacks. They're normally like very sophisticated, very targeted, and they're normally pretty nasty. <laughs> a really big one that happened recently was with China and the US in 2014 when China hacked the US and leaked just tons of, or I don't know if they leaked or stole just tons of information about federal employees. This affected a lot of people. It even affected some of my family members who were serving during that time. Another really big one is Stuxnet, which was a really, really, really nasty worm, and it was a joint effort between the US and Israel, and they actually attacked Iran, and it was their centrifuges, and what those do is they spin uranium to enrich it. I'm not even gonna try and explain that further because I'm even surprised that I remembered that much. 
but if you are interested, I read a really cool article about it not too long ago, and I'll link it down below if you want to read more on it. Other organized hacking groups like Anonymous, I would not even closely consider that to any type of terrorism, that's more so activism. There's some really, 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 really funny and interesting stories and campaigns that they had with uh, the Church of Scientology. If you want to read up on some really cool events that went down, I would definitely recommend researching those hacks. Someone said, Wie stehst du zum Cloud Computing aus der Sicht eines Cybersecurity Studenten? I'm so happy that I have somebody that follows me from Germany. Oh my god, hello. So I am going to answer in English because I do not have the German vocabulary to answer back in cybersecurity terminology, but I am so, 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 so interested by cloud computing. I do think about going into that field every now and then. I've definitely researched the Amazon Web Services certifications and things like that. There's definitely so much room for growth. That's definitely a field that is never going away and is only going to continue to expand in the coming years. So I don't have any like expertise or like knowledge to give on that, but it's definitely a really cool thing that you can do, especially on the cybersecurity side of cloud computing. What keeps you going and motivated? My student loans. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I think the thing that keeps me going the most is just the thought of all the other young girls and all the other just like young adults and children that are thinking about going into cybersecurity and just those that are even just beginning to look and learn about like what a job is. I think having representation in the field is so important. Having women in the field is so important. Um, representation of all kinds, every ethnicity, literally just everything. So I just want to make sure that I'm positively contributing to that move and to that effort. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things that keeps me going as far as constantly learning new things, constantly wanting to grow. Um, I just want to be able to encourage and help other people and inspire other people to pursue STEM. I got, can you suggest some books for cybersecurity that will be helpful before I go to university? I would say read the Security Plus textbook. Um, I will add a picture because I forgot the name and the title, but it's like the 501 something Security Plus. That one really breaks down a solid amount of things that you should know as a cybersecurity professional and student and if you just get that information and that knowledge earlier it'll just make everything so much easier when you actually do go to university and have like that foundation to build on. Someone said can a MIS major go into cybersecurity? Um, and I just want to also pair this with a couple of other comments that I've seen. I've seen people say that like hey like what if I like don't have formal education or like what if I like only have a GED like all these other different things. You can literally do anything you want to okay like let's just first put that out there i know that like you may have to work harder and that the transition may be a little bit more difficult but you can do it if you want to do it you can do it <laughs> there is no reason especially if you're already in the it field that you wouldn't be able to learn about cybersecurity. you may find out that like you don't like it or you may again just have to like push a little bit harder to learn everything but there's no reason that you can't do it and even if you don't like it like that's okay like move on do something else there's so many jobs in this world there's space for all of us this question almost kind of hit close to home um, this question said, in school I didn't learn much programming and I'm scared that if I go I won't learn. Which I can emphasize with a lot because I was not good at computer science in high school and I do want to actually make a whole video talking about this but basically I had a really bad teacher, um, she like really put me down and like really was telling me to like not continue to pursue the field when I moved to my new city. I ended up meeting a new teacher that really really helped me really pushed me and i ended up actually learning how to program and deciding to pursue cybersecurity. but if you don't know how to program like it's okay like it's seriously fine first of all if you're going to college your first year or year and a half of college you're not going to be programming anyways because you're going to be knocking out those basic classes so to begin you have all of this time to learn if you really really feel the need to learn programming before you get to those classes but most of the time, you're going to have an introduction to programming class. They don't expect you to already know how to program. Of course it helps, but you don't have to know how to program to be successful in those classes. Like, my Java 1 class was literally like, what is a variable? So, it's literally from square one. I think one thing to keep in mind is that you don't have to know everything before you go to college. You go to college to learn because if you knew everything, there'd be no reason for you to go to college, right? So remember that you're going there to learn and that it's okay to like have to work a little bit harder or if you don't like easily slide into like the subject, like you have time to grow, you have time to learn. Honestly, that's just what college is for. Someone said, what's the best way to tackle four units when one unit is taking up the rest of your time? And I'm guessing you're talking about classes and 
I am having that problem right now. One of my classes specifically like operating system security somehow has like so little work and somehow is also consuming all of my time. And then also my class that is basically the security plus um, prep class or exam class. I don't even know. It's just basically that, that exam. That class is so, so much work. We have labs and then we have like 10 or what is it? Like six to 10 page papers single spaced on the lab, which is like, like, yes, I can do it, but like, wow, like that's, that's how we're gonna do it, okay. <laughs> the biggest thing that has helped me is to just get a giant calendar and literally write down all of my dates. I do still like to like use my digital planner and like make it look all cute, but one thing that I have to have is something to literally look at and stare at and like know how much time I have before this assignment is due so I can actually like set aside time. I had one instance where I didn't realize that I had one of these really long papers due that night at midnight and from 7 to 12 I wrote six pages single spaced I had a fever like when I was done I literally had a fever <laughs> that is really not fun to go to and I don't wish that on anybody and I know this is something that everybody has to learn and the most boring answer ever but you just have to work on your time management like you have to be able to say no to yourself when it comes to entertainment or spending time on your phone. You just have to know how to allocate your time and what will work most effectively for you with like your school and your work and whatever else you have going on. My favorite way to do work is to kind of have these dedicated sprints. So I'll like work really hard for an hour and then take a 20 minute break or 10 minute break or however long. There is actually like time slots or time increments that are like recommended. I normally just pick a time by myself and decide to power through for however long I feel like I can and then stop and then keep going and yeah that's how I've been doing it that helps me just knock out all of my work and have that time to just be really focused and not be distracted by anything else going on around me so try it out I'll probably also I say this in every single video but I'm probably going to do a video on how I study very 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 soon probably in the next coming two weeks so keep an eye out for that and hopefully I can help you out a bit for next semester <laughs> All right, that was pretty much it for this video. I don't want to make it too long. I hope you guys enjoyed some of those questions. If you want to hang out with me outside of YouTube, go ahead and follow my Instagram at Rebecca J. Richard. I post on my stories pretty much daily and I love interacting with you guys on DMs. I'm trying to get better about checking those more regularly and responding to you guys faster. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell if you want to be notified when I upload. I will see you guys very, very soon. Until next time, bye.